Hi, I'm Arsham, and this series of videos about computer science and game development are sponsored by Kidacode. I've started taking a course called CS50 made by Harvard, which gives you all the knowledge you need for computer science and game development. And this series of videos are summarized versions of that course. Feel free to check it out for yourself. Now on to the video. In this video, we're going over pointers in programming. First of all, what are pointers? Well, a pointer is an object in many programming languages that stores a memory address. So basically a pointer references or points to a location in memory. So this leads us back to computer memory. So we know that all our files on a computer live on your disk drive, whether it's a HDD or SSD. But we also know to change or manipulate that data, we need to move it to RAM, random access memory and RAM does not have anywhere near the amount of space that a normal disk drive has. So normally disk drives have about 256 up to a few terabytes of storage, but RAM has quite a lower amount compared to that, being from 512 megabytes, depending if you have an older machine, or maybe to 64 gigabytes. So basically RAM is pretty volatile and changeable, but as soon as you turn off your computer, all the data would disappear because it's temporary. So now that we know the term memory, now we can move on to the programming side and see how many bytes of memory each data type takes in C. So first of all, we have the int, which normally takes about four bytes of memory. Then we have the char, which is just a character, which only takes up one byte of memory because it's storing one single character. After that, we have the float, which takes up four bytes of memory. If you want a decimal number with more precision, you would have to use the double, which takes up to 8 bytes of memory. And lastly, we have the string, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later on. Now we can come back to the idea that memory is just a really long array of byte-sized cells. So if you take that into consideration, we can say that an int would take up 4 of these squares, or 4 bytes of memory, and the same for the rest of the data types as well. We've talked about arrays before, which are pretty similar to computer memory in that they are both long lists of empty space until filled up. And similarly, each location in memory has an address, like an array would have an index. So this is a representation of a block of memory, but this one only has 10 bytes to make it easier for you guys to understand. But normally, an actual block of memory would have a lot more bytes than this. So let's say we want to store the character B inside of a block of memory. And as we know, chars only take up one byte. So they do fit, so we can put it anywhere we like. Now let's say I want to store an integer in this block. Again, we know that integers take up 4 bytes of memory, so we would have to allocate 4 of these squares to store an integer value. But this doesn't seem right, because normally when you store data in a block of memory, they would have to be written in binary. So we do have to convert these to their corresponding binary value. So now let's see how we can store strings in memory. For example, if we want to store the word happy in our memory, we would need to allocate 1 byte per letter. So in this case, we would need to allocate 6 bytes of memory. But wait, you're asking yourself, why 6 bytes? There's only 5 letters. Well, normally we need to identify if a word has finished. So we need an extra byte which contains backslash 0 to indicate that that's the end of that word. So now that we talked a bit about memory, let's shift our focus to pointers themselves. As I told you guys earlier in the video, pointers are basically just addresses. So a way to understand how they work is through an example. So let's say we declare an integer variable, call it num for example, and we assign it the value of 10. So far this is nothing new, but now we define another variable, but this time instead of int, we use int star, and we name it num underscore lock for the location of the number. After we declare the variable, we assign the value of ampersand num. So now you might be thinking, what are these two symbols that I used? Well, the asterisk symbol is actually another way of saying that the variable is a pointer. So in this case, it would be an integer pointer. And the second symbol, which is an ampersand, would represent the actual address of the variable in the block of memory. Earlier, we kind of brushed over defining the number of bytes that a string takes up. But now let's talk about it. So in C, normally when you define a string, you would have to put char star. In the videos before, we were using string. That's because I was using the CS50 library for C, which has built-in functions which makes using strings a lot easier. But now we want to see how strings are actually formed. Still a bit blur? Well, let's try an example. Here we have a block of memory that has a few integers inside. But now let's say we want to spell the word happy, and we don't have enough space to write the word. So that's where char star comes in. The word happy has five letters, and each of these letters have an address. So basically, a char star is pointing towards a character and giving a pointer to the next character. 
For example, we have the letter H, which points to the letter A in another byte of memory. And this is only the case when your memory is getting full and we don't want to look for a block of memory which can fit the word happy back to back. And we continue this process until we have assigned a place for each letter of the word in our memory, as well as the backslash zero which we need. Okay, thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed, please click that like button and make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get more content like this. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and bye bye.